Tonight on Creme 2, we hear from the city of Spokane as rumors of a new homeless shelter in Medical Lake are still being cleared up. We start the week with a few isolated thunderstorms, some of those packing a bit of a punch. Although not, not, none of us, of course, wanted this news, we're not caught by surprise. And tonight we are learning more about what dangers chronic wasting disease could pose for the deer population and for humans tonight. you that plan is off the table. Over the weekend, Medical Lake's mayor shut down rumors that a former women's prison in Medical Lake would be bought by the city of Spokane and turned into a homeless shelter. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown toured that facility just last week. In our effort to bring you more to this story, Creme 2's chief journalist Amanda Rowley asked the mayor's office about that tour. She is joining us now live from Spokane City Hall. Amanda? Mark and Whitney, Spokane's Mayor Lisa Brown's office insists that her visit to the former Pine Lodge Corrections Center had nothing to do with turning it potentially into a homeless shelter. Now, the mayor says that the third district state legislators organized the visit and it was to see if this area, this site, could meet the region's public safety needs. Now, the mayor was unavailable for interviews today. Instead, I spoke with spokesperson Aaron. Aaron Brown and she told me this visit was a fact finding mission to see if this site could be used for a variety of things, including additional jail space, which is an idea that council member Jonathan Bingle also pitched for the site. Hutt added that the Spokane Regional Communications Center is in need of a new facility and they considered this as a possible new site. But Hutt says it was immediately apparent the building is just not usable. The takeaway was that it would take a lot of money to do anything to fix it up. We're not in a place to be able to do that. It doesn't financially make sense. We don't have the money to, to basically do an overhaul of that building. Um, it's, it's, we're not interested. Councilmember Jonathan Bingle pitched the idea of using the former women's prison as a possible homeless resource center or for low level offenders at last week's Spokane Regional Homeless Authority meeting. But he believed the idea died after a conversation he had with Medical Lakes mayor when she told him the building is in disrepair. Now, Hutt with the city of Spokane told me that the Medical Lake mayor, Terry Cooper, was in fact invited to that tour of the visit with Lisa Brown and those third district legislators. But Mayor Cooper did not attend. I have reached out to Mayor Cooper for a response. I'll share that once we get it. Reporting from Spokane City Hall, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Let's talk weather today. Some areas of the inland northwest saw scattered showers while others staying very dry. But it is looking like most of those storms have cleared, so that's good news, along with maybe some of those red flag warnings for dry lightning. So turning now to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legoo. Well, we still have some, but not all. Whitney's right. Most of those red flag warnings have expired. Some of them still remain down to the south and have been extended through tomorrow morning. But for the most part, we are heading into a much calmer weather pattern. 93 degrees with mostly sunny skies is where we currently stand. And most of the activity sits well out to our east. For that reason, Coeur d'Alene has jumped significantly in the past hour, up to 87. Sandpoint sits at 81. Spokane, 93. Mid and upper 90s out in central Washington, where you missed out on all those storms entirely. But there it is, a whole swath of them. Down to our south, tons of activity here locally. Not much. Notice even Sandpoint out of the clear or in the clear now. Bunch of activity making its way through northeast Oregon. A severe thunderstorm remains in effect, or severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect through 5.45 p.m. Heading right toward Grangeville, where you've been seeing a lot of activity. That's where most of its day is off to the north. Not much else is expected. Things will continue to just stay calm. Tomorrow, maybe a straight thunderstorm, but emphasis on maybe. If it happens, it'll be in the afternoon and it'll be up in the mountains. Really. We don't see much else. Instead, it is all about the sunshine. 92 tomorrow, 90 on Wednesday, 89 on Thursday. It is sunny and mild in the days to come. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. Thank you very much. All eyes are on the election tonight or tomorrow night as voters in Washington state prepare for the primary. There are several key races, including the governor's race and congressional district five. Voters need to have their ballots postmarked or in a ballot drop box by eight o'clock tomorrow night. You can find a full list of Dropbox locations on our website. Just head to creme.com.
And remember, Washington is a top two primary state, and that means the two candidates with the most votes will advance to the general election in November, regardless of party. So it is possible that there will not be both a Democrat and a Republican in each race moving forward. This is to simplify the general election ballot and increase the power of the voters by not just slotting in a Democrat or Republican candidate. And data from Washington's Secretary of State is showing only 5.3% of people ages 18 to 24 have voted as of Friday evening. Our Seattle sister station spoke to voters this weekend in that age bracket. I have not yet filled it out. I'm planning on doing that later today. The younger generations are definitely more outspoken, so that surprises me that we're more quiet in the voting sense. Now, by contrast, in the 65 and over age group, more than 32 percent had returned their ballots by Friday. The age bracket below that is the next highest voter turnout so far. But it is possible that many voters, again, especially in those younger age groups, will still turn out. Again, those ballots that are postmarked by Tuesday will be accepted. If you haven't already mailed yours, the U.S. Postal Service recommends using one of the official drop boxes. Nationally, Vice President Kamala Harris is on the verge of announcing who she wants to join her on the Democratic ticket for the White House. This comes as a new CBS News poll shows Harris has closed the gap with former President Donald Trump. But that poll was taken before a global drop in stock markets. Skylar Henry has more now from the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris left the Naval Observatory Monday afternoon, headed to meetings at the White House. On Sunday, at least three running mate finalists were seen arriving at the vice president's home for in-person interviews. Harris is expected to pick one of these six men to join her on the Democratic ticket. CBS News has learned she plans to announce her choice Tuesday morning, just in time for a new running mate to join her for a campaign swing through seven battleground states. It's an honor to be considered, uh, but regardless of what happens through the process, uh, I'm going to do everything I can to get Kamala Harris elected as president of the United States this November. A new CBS News poll now shows Harris statistically tied with former President Trump in those battlegrounds, as well as nationally. The poll shows a big jump for Democrats compared to when President Biden was still running. When he dropped out, he had a 5 percent deficit nationwide. Well, thank you. Trump campaigned in the battleground state of Georgia over the weekend rally at the same arena where Vice President Harris campaigned a few days earlier. If Harris wins this election, you will quickly have a Kamala economic crash. You're going to have a crash. The CBS News poll shows Trump with a lead over Harris when it comes to the economy. Donald Trump still has a big edge on that, just like he did against Joe Biden. Trump has been posting about the markets dropping on social media throughout the day, including this one saying simply, Trump cash versus Kamala crash. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Still ahead, market analysts are looking for answers after that stock market took a large hit today. The latest on what's behind the sell-off coming up in less than three minutes.